On the merchant ship named Demeter, a fierce battle will take place between mortal people and the powerful Dracula. A few days before the battle began, a group of people on horseback were carrying crates heading to the busiest port in Bulgaria. Clemens is a skilled doctor. While he's gambling with others, a messenger runs up to announce that the ship Demeter is in need of additional sailors. Clemens immediately went to get in line for the job. When he heard that they needed three strong sailors, a scar-faced man stepped forward and introduced himself as the strongest man in this town, which impressed the first mate. The captain arrived. He was impressed with Clemens because of his well-dressed appearance and educated manner. Clemens explained that he had graduated from Cambridge University with a medical degree and that he would be a valuable addition to the ship as a doctor if chosen. However, the first mate explained that they only needed strong sailors, not someone with weak legs and soft hands like him. As a result, the scar-faced man was chosen along with two other robust men. Later, when the group with crates arrived, they unexpectedly refused to load them onto the ship. They even paid more than the required delivery fee and bid good luck, leaving the first mate perplexed. While they were hoisting the crates onto the ship, the scar-faced man suddenly lost his nerve when he saw the dragon seal on one of them, causing the rope in his hand to slip from his grasp, and just at that moment, a young boy ran underneath the crate. Fortunately, Clemens was nearby noticed and rushed to save the child. As fate would have it, the boy was the captain's grandson named Toby. In gratitude for saving Toby, the captain allowed Clemens to join the crew of sailors. The scar-faced man, after seeing the dragon symbol, hastily retreated from the ship. Once all the preparations were complete, the Demeter set sail towards the capital city of London in the United Kingdom. Meanwhile, on the mainland, the cargo handlers gazed at the ship and prayed. They seemed to know something dreadful awaiting the ship ahead. On board the ship, young Toby held a deep fondness for the one who had saved him. He excitedly introduced Clemens to every nook and cranny of the ship. He proudly boasted that in any emergency situation, all they needed to do was knock firmly on the ship's walls, and everyone would hear because the Demeter was exceptionally well constructed. The young boy then glided through the animal pens to ensure their well-being. His final destination was the ship's galley, where the head chef informed him that upon hearing six bell tolls, he must promptly be present or else prepare to endure hunger. In the initial days aboard the Demeter, everyone reveled in fair winds and smooth sailing. Meanwhile, the captain and his first mate engaged in a conversation. During this exchange, the captain decided that this would be his final voyage, as he didn't want his nephew Toby to inherit a life of uncertainty and peril on the tempestuous seas. Therefore, he planned that upon reaching London, he would hand over his position and the entire ship to the first mate. While the crew above deck sang and danced with merriment, below in the cargo hold, something stirred within one of the crates. Afterward, the crew gathered in the galley, happily discussing their plans for spending their hard-earned wages after the voyage. One of the sailors asked Clemens about his intentions with his earnings this time. Clemens explained that the purpose of this journey was not wealth, but rather the exploration of the world's beauty through a belief in natural science, contrasting with the prevalent superstitions of their era. However, his words made others laugh because it was quite unusual. Suddenly, Toby's dog peered downward and began barking relentlessly. This prompted both the boy and Clemens to hastily descend to the cargo hold. They heard the disordered cries of the penned animals, Clemens attributing it to the weather. Indeed, at that moment, a storm was approaching causing the ship to sway precariously. Clemens instructed Toby to inform the captain while he ventured into the cargo hold to investigate. As he knelt to examine it more closely, a sudden outstretched arm startled him. It was a woman, seemingly severely ill, rambling incoherently. The people aboard the ship were understandably apprehensive about the possibility of her carrying an infectious disease. However, in his capacity as a doctor, Clemens resolved to help the young woman. He decided to administer a transfusion of his own blood, despite the crew's concerns about potential infection. Meanwhile, below in the cargo hold, a hand with sharp claw-like nails was slowly emerging, indicating that something was slowly awakening. After administering the blood transfusion to the woman, Clemens ascended to the ship's deck to take on the night watch alongside one of the sailors. The sailor conducted a round of inspections on the ship's deck and began using a spyglass to observe the surrounding terrain. As he swung the spyglass to the right, suddenly, the face of a demon materialized within it, horrifying him to his core. Clemens was starting to worry because the sailor hadn't returned. He tethered the ship's wheel in place and went to investigate. Clemens then tapped on the ship's side to signal the sailor. 
and shortly after, the sailor approached Clemens with a visage stricken with fear. He asked Clemens if he saw anything on the ship's deck, but Clemens replied that he saw nothing at all. Meanwhile, down in the cargo hold, the dog sensed something amiss, barking incessantly. The head chef ventured into the animal pens and was horrified to discover that all the animals had been bitten to death. Even the dog itself had met the same fate. The crew assumed the dog had contracted rabies and attacked the other animals before succumbing to the disease itself. In fear of a rabies outbreak, they decided to cast all the deceased animals into the sea. Early the next morning, everyone toiled at the oars to propel the ship through the wrath of nature. It was the tenth day of their journey, and Clemens persisted in the blood transfusions for the ailing woman. As night fell, one of the sailors on night watch duty suddenly heard a loud noise, he went to investigate and found that the cargo hold hatch had been violently breached, creating a gaping hole. Then he examined the area and encountered a grotesque creature resembling a demon. As he drew his knife, the creature pounced, using its sharp claws to tear the man's throat open and drain his blood. By morning, panic ensued as there was no trace of the ill-fated sailor, and a trail of blood was discovered on the ship's floor. Right at that moment, the woman had also awakened and rushed forward, screaming before everyone, He is here! and he will kill all of you. Her words were initially dismissed. Clemens immediately rushed to reassure her and brought her back to her room. There, the girl revealed herself as Anna, a local villager from the village where the crates bearing the dragon seal were sent. The entire village lived in fear of a demon known as Dracula, residing in an ancient castle on the mountain. This demon hid within the guise of a man, but by night, it would kill and drink the blood of innocent people. To protect the villagers, the village elders offered Anna as a sacrifice to nourish the demon, which is why she had been sent along with the demon in the cargo. In the following days, during a stormy night, the demon once again emerged to hunt. Two sailors on night watch duty on the ship's deck noticed something amiss and split up to investigate. One of them was seized by the demon and brutally killed, his horrified companion left to climb up the mast in a desperate bid to escape. However, the demon relentlessly pursued from behind. With no one at the helm, the ship tilted sharply to one side, sending everyone tumbling out of their beds. They rushed to the deck to secure the wheel, but their panic deepened as they found no sign of the two sailors on night watch duty. They frantically searched. Clemens suddenly saw blood dropping on Toby's clothes. Terrified, Toby looked up, and they eventually located one of the sailors, lying in a precarious state with a bite mark on his neck. The other sailor remained missing. The ship had endured 18 days at sea, and now the crew had descended into a state of fearful madness, beginning to believe Anna's words. The captain then issued an order for everyone to arm themselves and search every nook of the ship to hunt down the demon. As the sun began to set, the bitten sailor transformed into a malevolent vampire. He broke free from the rigging and began hunting Toby to deliver him to his master. The poor boy fled into the captain's cabin, locked the door, and incessantly pounded on the wooden walls to alert the others. However, in the face of Toby's terror, Dracula had lain in wait, and as soon as the others managed to enter, he captured Toby and fed on his blood. The following morning, the vampire sailor was bound to the mast, and as the sun gradually rose, he burst into flames. On that very night, fearing for his own life, the head chef secretly took one of the lifeboats with the intent to escape alone. However, the lifeboat drifted back to the ship, bearing a deck soaked in blood. Meanwhile, Anna had just requested Clemens to help her check the cargo crates. They quickly realized that these shipments were destined for a monastery in London. At first, they found crates filled with nothing but sand, but one crate bore distinct markings. When they opened it, they discovered a dragon-headed staff. Anna immediately sensed that this was where the evil resided. As for Toby, despite the blood transfusion from his grandfather, he did not survive and was wrapped in a white cloth for a sea burial ceremony. As everyone prepared to cast his body into the sea, the captain suddenly noticed movement within the shroud. He approached and unwrapped it. Toby unexpectedly opened his eyes and attacked his grandfather. Vampire Toby also burst into flames under the sunlight, and Clemens promptly tossed him into the ocean. The ship was now less than a day away from London. The crew was in a state of frantic desperation, intermingled with fear as they sought a way to deal with the demon. They decided to sink the ship to drown the demon before it could reach the shore. Anna had informed them that guns and bullets were useless against Dracula. So, they set to work constructing a trap that sealed off all paths to the ship's wheel 
leaving only one way for Dracula to reach it. Anna would be there as bait, and the others would ambush the demon, hoping to injure it severely. As night descended, the demon awoke. It appeared in the sky, flying around the ship. With its horrifying power and the ability to fly, the demon easily killed one sailor, then turned its attention to the ship's mate. But he managed to bore a hole in the ship to let water flood in before sacrificing himself. The captain had the same fate as other crew members. Only Anna and Clemens remained on the ship, facing the bloodthirsty demon. Clemens began to shout in anger, trying to lure the demon out. Finally, it appeared before him. It effortlessly knocked Clemens away. As it prepared to finish him off, Anna shot it from behind, but it seemed unfazed. The demon lunged at her and began to feed on her blood. Clemens picked up an axe and thrust it from behind into the Dracula. The two then attempted to reach the lifeboat, but the demon swiftly reached them, grabbing Clemens by the neck. He defiantly told the demon that he wasn't afraid, and the demon replied that he would be. Just as it was about to bite him, Anna cut the binding rope, causing the mass to fall directly onto the demon. Anna and Clemens jumped off the sinking ship as it slowly descended into the depths. They believed that Dracula had been sunk along with the ship, but the demon could still push the mast off itself, and the ship was too close to the shore to sink completely. Anna and Clemens were floating amidst the wreckage of the ship. As dawn approached, Anna realized she was transforming into a vampire. With the first light of day breaking, Anna was ready for the inevitable end of her life. Clemens, the sole survivor of the Demeter, found himself not long after in a London tavern. There he recognized the figure of the demon Dracula, now disguised as an aristocrat. It bared its sharp teeth in a mysterious smile and vanished. Clemens swore to hunt down the demon and return it to the hell it belonged to. This is the end of the movie. If you enjoy it, please like and subscribe to support my channel. Thank you for watching.